Opa, I know I speak for all of the Diecast community when I say that you will be missed, and we hope you're at peace. This build is for you. Don't go away. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Fat Guy Productions. I am Paul, coming to you, as always, from beautiful Las Vegas, Nevada. And, indeed, this is uh, my tribute build to one of our community members uh, in the diecast community, Opa. Uh, I'm sure you've seen some of his builds. If you follow the Three Blind Mice at all, he was always participating with us. Uh, he he was a... a, a a good man and taken too early and we're all sad that he has had to leave um so we've we decided to honor him with a memorial build and so throughout the day you'll be seeing uh diecast builds in memory of opa and i thought to myself because i i'm so far behind that what could i do for opa and i thought to myself hey They've seen this car before, okay? If you didn't see the video this morning, I talked about these new hubs that I used. And uh, so I've got this Corvette sitting here with half really cool wheels on it and half junky wheels. And I thought, why not finish this out in memory of Opa? So let's go ahead and get to work. So we're going to get started with this car. And we have a little bit of an advantage in that Two of the wheels are already done. So that's something, right? Anyhow. Okay. Well, what we got to do is we got to go ahead, as always, get the base off the bottom of the car. So we'll get out the drill and the VIX bits, and we'll go ahead and drill away the rivets and pull this car apart. So a little dab of oil will do you. And um, listen, if anybody knows this, Put it down in the comments. For some reason, these little dabs of oil help the uh, drill bits actually cut away these rivets uh, much, much easier. Uh, I'm not sure why that is, but I, I guess if you maybe you work in a machine shop or something, or if you're just smarter than I am, maybe you know that. So um, if you know why that does that, let me know. But it really does make a huge difference. So make sure you put a little bit of oil on your... Uh, rivets before you drill them out and you'll have a lot less problems also make sure you're using vix bits and shielded drilling because let me tell you something there is nothing better all right we got the rivets drilled off and we're going to just pop the car apart and see what we have here um, other than a cruddy base and body so we do have a cruddy base and as you see i cut the other two wheels off to help me get the car apart um but no big deal. Now, here's something really cool and interesting. That interior is all made out of clear plastic. The interior and the glass, it's all one piece. Weird. Never seen anything like it before. All right. Anyhow, let's go ahead and get the posts prepped so that we can put this car back together when we're done uh, by drilling them out and tapping them, and then they'll be ready. So I, I think this might be a first for Fat Guy Productions in that you're getting two videos on the same day. This morning at 6, we released the video on the new hubs. And then now we're releasing the video to memorialize Opa. Um, so yeah, two videos in one day. I think it's a Fat Guy first. And, and while this video is not... A bright vision video okay a lot of bright vision stuff is going to happen here in that we are going to use uh the new bright vision hot swap hubs um but we're also using their little tap handle now i've had some people say it's too delicate and small and it doesn't hold together well and this that the next thing well uh pooey to that i say because this thing is fantastic for this light little job that we're doing we're not we're not 
tapping out a hole for a rivet on a, an ocean liner or something. We're tapping a little 256 screw hole, okay? And, you know, you get some big lunky thing and you just barely get it started and you let go to reposition your hand and the weight of it pulls it out of the hole and it's it's just not any good. I don't like it. So anyhow, I love their Bright Vision tap handle. Okay, so with the car and the warm liquid goo, um, I've decided what I want to do is I want to take the two new wheels off of the one side of the, the base because I don't want to destroy those. And the base, well, trust me, it just needs some work. It really is cruddy looking. So uh, I'm going to use the needle nose to hold those axles, pop off the wheels, and there you can see two sides have hubs, two sides don't. And we'll just go ahead and put those new wheels to the side, and then we'll go ahead and get this base all cleaned up. Now, I've pretty much, short of the, the base needing new zinc plating, uh, I pretty much take into uh, the same thing over and over again on my bases. I take the bases, and I spray them with some of the Flitz uh, calcium and lime and I let it sit for just a little bit. Then I wash it off and brush it down with the brass bristle brush. Uh, then once that's done, I'll go ahead and rinse it off, dry it, and then we can go ahead and get to polishing it. So the final polishing of the base, I'm going to smear on a bunch of flits with my finger work it into all the nooks and crannies and then using my rotary tool and a buffing wheel i'm gonna go ahead and get this thing to shine in like a new penny so one of the features i really like about the microfiber towels is they're kind of two-sided one side is sort of like a short nap and one side is kind of like a long nap and when i'm trying to clean out the residual polish and stuff uh, I like to use the long nap side of the towel, um, wrap it around my finger, and I can really get in there and those, those fibers get down into the nooks and crannies and help me get everything cleaned all up and polished. So now once I've got it polished, again, we're going to go back and we're going to use the uh, Renaissance wax. And again, I'm going to just smear that all over with my fingertip. Uh, get it all worked in really, really well because this is what's going to protect my otherwise unprotected base. You know, I put all this work into getting it all shiny and stuff, and I don't want it to just start oxidizing right away. So the Renaissance wax is going to prevent that from happening. So we smear it on and buff it off. Okay, so we need two more wheels now because we have the two already. So we're going to pull those out. And somebody had asked me about the car and said, isn't the front supposed to have the little wheels? Uh, no, it's supposed to have the medium wheels and the backs are supposed to be uh, the large. So that's what we're... The backs might supposed to be mediums too. I don't know. Uh, I didn't really look at that. But what I do know is the fronts are mediums and I think it looks really super cool with the large in the rear so that's what we're doing large wheels in the rear mediums in the front deep dish chrome as i always do you know how i roll and uh first thing we're gonna do is just like we did in the uh, video this morning we're gonna pop on some new bearings which is the absolute greatest thing ever to have hit this hobby i i'm so excited about that but we'll pop on two more new bearings and then we can put some brand new wheels on this So now listen, it, it would probably be pretty easy for Bright Vision to rest on its laurels. He'll probably be able to retire on the riches that he shall make off these hubs. So I say, let's not let him off the hook, okay? Let's start pestering him for hubs for Johnny Lightning. Um, let's start pestering him for wheels for Johnny Lightning, Maybe uh, new super fast wheels. The, the super fast wheels can even be hub style like this, you know, whatever it takes. But uh, hey, he's on a roll, so let's start pestering him for new products.
Now, again, um, the wheels, they do roll, but they don't roll great. Okay, so just know that going in. This is not going to be a good roller, but they will roll. Um, if you want them to roll better than this, it wouldn't be hard to uh, run a little needle file through the, the center of the hub and, and widen that up. Um, but what what's happening is that slot, the, the, the hub fits on the axle, it's all just fine. But when we put the cap the hub style wheel on top of the hub it kind of pinches that shut and it helps bind it onto the axle and it doesn't does you know just honestly it doesn't spin very well so um you know the choice becomes do you want it to spin really really well and be kind of sloppy and floppy or do you want the wheel to sit on there very nicely and straight and firm? And that's what I would prefer 10 times out of 10. So I don't want him to change it at all. If I want the car to go faster, I'll modify the hub myself. Okay, so like I said, the interior part was a really weird little thing in that it's all made out of one clear piece and then the glass part is like folded over to make the windshields and uh so you know it doesn't really come apart but i took it to the sink and i washed it and got a toothbrush all up in there and stuff and now we're going to use some flits and polish out the windshield but this uh this setup kind of makes it not really easy to paint. You could do it, but I didn't want to keep flexing the windshield where it attaches to the interior because I didn't want it to break off. So I, I just washed the thing, dried it, and now I'm going to polish the windshield with uh, some flits on a Q-tip, and, and that's going to be the extent of that. I guess if you really wanted to, you could probably paint the interior. I just didn't see a need. So this clear plastic that they made this out of is a little bit different than your normal Hot Wheel uh, glass piece. It's a, a softer plastic, and it didn't polish all that great, so it's definitely got to get a little dip in the gauzy. So I just kind of uh, dipped the little front windshield in the in the gauzy. I didn't worry about the back one, little glass because it's such a small little thing you can't even see it. So I just dip the front in, I'll wick away the gauzy, put it in the uh, onion saver to dry, and then we can go ahead and move on. Okay, so I plucked the body out of the warm liquid goo, and uh, it came out pretty good. Uh, we got a brass bristle brush it and, and pick out a little bit of red paint that's still clinging on to it. But it didn't really need that much work, especially because I've decided that I'm just going to go back to opaque red on this. So uh, I don't really need to worry about it being consistent or anything because it's going to get a primer layer. Um, I just need to make sure there's no residual on it and everything's smooth and neat and ready for the paint. Uh, now... On the paint job, I've also decided there's no way in the world I'm going to put those ugly tampos back on. I'm just going to make this a beautiful, shiny, glossy red Corvette. It should be hot. So at the paint booth, I went ahead and started with a little bit of gray primer from Tamiya. This stuff is amazing. If you're not using it, you have no idea what you're missing out. And that goes for die cast restorers and model builders. This stuff dries so smooth and beautiful. I, I can't even begin to tell you. I love this stuff. And in honor of Opa, we're doing all sorts of new stuff. We're using this opaque uh, paint from... The Redline shop, okay, I use a lot of their uh, Spectra Flame colors, and I have used some of their uh, opaque paints before, but I recently just ordered one of every color, and this is their Comp Red, 
and I'm going to use this on this build. It's going to be a first, and hopefully it'll come out as beautiful as I'm expecting it to. Okay, so for the opaque colors, you, you use them exactly the same as the Spectre Flame. You ration out how much paint you want, and then you put in the hardener, stir it up. And I don't know if we're going to need clear coat or not, um, because... I really haven't used this stuff enough, so we'll see what we get, and we'll decide about clear coat at the end. By the way, that's my dog playing in the background. He's ridiculous. I don't know, he's just standing there squeaking his little green frog for no apparent reason. But he looks happy. Now, I have painted a lot of die-cast cars using Tamiya paints, and they work great. But I got to tell you, this uh, opaque stuff from uh, the Redline shop is proving to be a real joy to work with. I'm, I'm really loving the way it's laying down. And uh, this car is not going to need any clear coat. Trust. It just It's not. With that red paint on and dry and looking absolutely amazing, we can go ahead and put everything back together. And it's really a simple uh, reassembly. The body, the glass interior, one-piece unit, put the base on and screw this sucker together. And we can call it done. Um, I really hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you love the way this car comes out. And Opa, I hope somewhere you're looking at this video and smiling. Well, there you have it, my Corvette Stingray, and this one goes out to you, Opa. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you guys enjoyed it as well, and if you did, please give this video a giant thumbs up, click subscribe, and don't forget to click the notification bell so you never miss one of my videos. As always, if you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. I love to hear from you guys. Okay, that's going to do it for today. Until next time, I'm going to get out of here. This is Paul from Fat Guy Productions saying be good.